Yesterday we did lesson 1.10, which is the seventh of seven total methods of factoring. It's called completing the square. And we saw what it does is it allows us to factor a trinomial of our standard form. Uh, when it's difficult, the Munchkin number, or if it takes too long, it's too cumbersome, or if it's near impossible, uh, we can still try to factor by completing the square. Also, completing the square shows us if something fundamentally is factorable or not. So in front of you, you have four questions. Um, as you watch this video, if you are watching this video, just hit pause and you can uh, work through it on your own and then come back to the video for explanation. So I'm going to go ahead and start with question 1A. So I'll go through the steps here. First thing we want to do is factor out the 5 from both the first two terms, not from everything, just from the first two terms. So I've taken the 5 from the 10 to leave you with a 2x. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep everything as is, so nothing changes here. I'm going to create a little bit of space in here. And in this space, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change this equation so that I, uh, sorry, uh, expand this equation. So what I have in here is basically going to be nothing. I'm going to add and subtract the same number. To get that number, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this value right here, the 2. Whether you see the 2 from there or the 2 from there, doesn't make a difference. You'll take half of it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Square it. 1 squared is 1. We're going to add and subtract it. Not square root, but squared, exponent 2. So I'll repeat. 2 divided by 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Square it is 1. I'm going to add and subtract a 1. Next, these first three terms here inside the four terms will always create a perfect square. So I'm going to isolate the perfect square. To isolate the perfect square, it means I have to get rid of this negative 1 and kick it to the outside of the bracket. To get rid of the negative 1 move the outside, I have to make sure I multiply it by the 5. So I'm going to move it to the outside by multiplying by the 5. One, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. I'll continue and just simplify this part right here. So negative 40, sorry, negative 40 minus 5 is negative 45. My next step is I'll factor the perfect square right there. To factor the perfect square, we know we're going to get one bracket with a squared on it. I'll take the square to the beginning, which is an x. Square to the end, which is a 1. Take the sign of the middle term, which is a plus. From here, I now have a difference of squares. I have a subtraction of two things that can be... Oops, sorry, I missed a step there. We're going to factor the 5 out of everything. So from this section here and this section here, I'll take out a common factor of 5. This is the double bracket step that a lot of times we forget. Look, I just forgot to do it right there myself. So when I factor out the 5... It doesn't look like anything changes here, but it has. I've taken out the 5. But negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9. If we're doing this correctly, what we're going to be left with here is a difference of squares. If it's not a difference of squares because I'm adding, it means I can't factor any further. The factoring becomes impossible. But since it is a difference of squares because I can subtract, I'm subtracting two things that square rule. That'll give me two brackets. One with a plus, one with a minus. Square root of x plus 1 squared is x plus 1. The square root of 9 is 3. We tied up the two brackets. x plus 1 plus 3 is x plus 4. x plus 1 minus 3 is x minus 2. A quick check if you wanted to, and you'll see you do end up with where you started with. So we're good. I'm going to move on to question B, so you can hit pause if you need to. It's question B. Now the number's going to get a little bit harder here, perhaps, just because I'm going to perhaps work with some fractions or decimals. So let's go ahead and try. Again, we're going to take out the a from the first two terms. No matter what it is, I'm going to always take it out. My next step, we'll just set this up first. I'm going to add and subtract a number. To get that number, I'll take this negative 5, divided by 2, and square it. In fact, let me just show it to you on my screen as I do it. So I'm going to take the negative 5 right there. Negative 5. I'll divide it by 2. This is just how I, I'm so used to using this calculator this way. And I'm going to square it. So when I square it, there's my squared button. And I get 6.25. Uh, I want to turn this back into a fraction, so for me it looks like that. So 25 over 4. I'm going to add and subtract 25 over 4.
Maybe I should have given myself a little bit more room there. My next step is to kick out this negative 25 over 4 outside the bracket. So this, nothing changes, nothing changes, nothing changes. But the minus 25 over 4, I need to kick outside the bracket. But when I do that, I have to make sure I multiply it by the 3 in front. So negative 25 over 4 times 3 is negative 75 over 4. I'm now going to simplify these two. Now some of you guys will start combining some of these steps as well, which is fine. Again, if you find I'm going too fast, just pause. So I'm just going to keep this perfect square inside here. I'm not going to touch it, although again, you can combine steps. I'll do the negative 18 minus 75 over 4, and just so you can see my calculator screen. Um, let's see, negative 18 uh, minus my 75 over 4 gives me negative, 174, negative 147 over 4. Next, I'll factor my difference my perfect square. So I'm going to factor this. To factor this, I know I'm going to get one bracket squared. Take the square root of the x squared is x. Take the square root of 25 over 4 is 5 over 2. And take the sign of the middle term, it's a minus. Alternatively, if you don't want to square root that, you can also just take this number and divide by 2. So negative 5 divided by 2 is negative 5 over 2. My next step is the double bracket step. So it's my big old bracket. I'm taking out the 3 from both parts of this. So I'm going to take out the 3 from the beginning. That leaves me with just an x minus 5 over 2 squared. I'll take out the 3 from here as well. So I'll take my negative 147 over 4 that I still have. I'll divide it by 3. And that number as a fraction is negative 49 over 4. Which is a good sign because that feels like it can be square rooted, right? That's my whole difference of squares. Because I can square at the top and square at the bottom, which means I'm probably doing this correctly. I'm going to get two brackets. One with a plus, one with a minus. x minus 5 over 2 square rooted that. You get x minus 5 over 2. Square root of 49 over 4 is 7 over 2. We'll simplify. Negative 5 over 2 plus 7 over 2. Type it in your calculator, do it in your head. You get plus 1. Negative 5 over 2 minus 7 over 2 is negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. So minus 6. And a quick check, if I want to multiply this, I do end up with what I started with. Pause it now. I'm going to move on to question C. Difference in question C now, I've got this negative as my common factor, but that, that's it. It doesn't really change anything else, so I can go ahead and start. Take up the negative 2. You're left with a plus 9 over 2x. So now, all of a sudden, we've got the fraction rate from the beginning. You notice I am using fractions and not the decimals. For those of you that choose to use the decimals, you're welcome to, but we've talked about this many times already this year. You need to make sure you understand the difference between when you're allowed the decimal and when you're not. If you still don't know we are in the seventh week of school, then either come see me at lunch, please do, so we can talk, talk about the difference between the decimals and the fractions, or just use fractions. It will always be fine. All right, next. I'm going to take my 9 over 2, and I'm going to take half of it. So 9 over 2 divided by 2. I'm going to square it. I'm doing this on the side over here. And I get 81 over 16. I'm going to add and subtract 81 over 16. Next, I'm going to keep the first two, three terms, pardon me, because that's my perfect square. And I'm going to kick out this negative 81 over 16, but when I do that, I have to make sure I multiply it by the 2 that's in front. So I have to make sure I multiply it by that negative, by that negative 2. So negative 81 over 16 times negative 2 is a... I'm just going to write the 18 there. Is plus 81 over 8. Again, I'm not skipping any steps so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. But absolutely, some of you will start skipping some steps. And I would normally skip a lot, skip a lot of steps. I'm probably down to about 3 steps or so. Because a lot I can just do in my head or just quickly. In fact, let's skip a step right now. Let me factor this and simplify this in the same step. That's probably something relatively straightforward to do. So to factor the perfect square, I'll take the square root of the x squared, which is an x, square root of the 81 over 16, which is 9 over 4, or alternatively, take half of this number, 9 over 4, and it's an addition. 18 plus 81 over 8, I'll do that as well. We get 225 over 8, plus 225 over 8. 
All right. Double bracket step now. Take out the negative 2 from everything. That's going to leave me with an x plus 9 quarters squared. I'm going to take the 225 over 8 and divide it by the negative 2. And that will give me negative 225 over 16, which again is a nice number that I can square root. This is going to give me two brackets. I'll have an x plus 9 over 4 plus the square root of 225 over 16, which is 15 over 4, and an x plus 9 over 4 minus 220, the square root of 225 over 16, which is a minus 15 over 4. Let's finish this off. 9 quarters plus 15 quarters is, what is that, 24 quarters, which is a plus 6. And 9 minus that will give me negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 over 2. Minus 3 over 2. I'm just doing a quick check on the side here, because I'm just wondering if I made a slight mistake there. No, we, no we're good. We look good. Now, a little note. For those of you that can see the benefit of this, I might actually prefer this instead of Munchkin numbering. Even though it's a lot of steps, you might actually find it quicker than Munchkin numbering. Because you don't actually have to think about Munchkin numbers, you just have to do calculations. If you prefer this, then it's not a problem. But I'm going to have to get back to talking about that afterwards. So let's do question D, and then let's talk about afterwards how we can Munchkin number. Okay, well, question D. Take out the 8, I'm left with an x squared minus 2 divided by 8 is a 1 quarter. So 1 quarter x. At every point of your solution all year long, you should be simplifying your fractions, reducing them. Next, we'll take half of 1 quarter, which is a 1 over 8, and square it. We get 1 over 64. So I'll add and subtract 1 over 64. Again, some of you are going to start combining some steps here. I'm going to kick out the minus 164. When I do that, I have to multiply it by the 8. That gives me negative 1 over 8. I'll factor my perfect square, which will be an x minus 1 over 8 squared. Negative 3 minus 8. Sorry, negative 3 minus 1 over 8, that is. Is negative 25 over 8. Take out the 8, so this is my double bracket step. I get an x minus 1 8 squared. Negative 25 over 8 divided by 8 will give me the um, 25 over 64, pardon me. This is my difference of squares now. I'll get two brackets. I'll get an x minus 1 over 8 plus the square root of that, which is 5 eighths and x minus 1 over 8 minus the square root of that, which is a minus 5 eighths. Negative 1 eighth plus 5 eighths is 4 eighths, or 1 half, positive 1 half. Negative 1 eighth minus 5 eighths is negative 6 eighths, which is negative 3 quarters. Okay. Now, you're welcome to pause it. I'm going to show you how you can use completing the square factoring to Munchkin number. I'm going to go back and look at question A. In question A, if you had this original question, 5x squared plus 10x minus 40, you want to munchkin number it, you wouldn't. You wouldn't say what adds to 10 and what multiplies to 5 times negative 40 is negative 200. You wouldn't do that. You would take out the 5 as my common factor first. So let me do that, in fact, over here. So let me just restart the question underneath so you can just see how this compares. So you take out the 5 first. And you'd be left with an x squared plus 2x minus 8. Again, I'm showing you how you would munchkin number. What adds to 2 multiplies to negative 8. It's a positive 4, negative 2. So positive 4, negative 2. And you get the same answer either way. Now, I would argue the munchkin numbering is so much quicker. I can almost instantly do this in my head. Whereas completing the square might be longer. But it depends. It depends on the person. Some of you may find... Munchkin numbering faster than completing the square in certain cases. Some of you may find completing the square faster than Munchkin numbering in certain cases. In this case, I would definitely pick Munchkin numbering over this. Let me show you B. If I do B by Munchkin numbering, I'm just going to rewrite the question over here. 
Take out the 3. I'm left with an x squared minus 5x minus 6. What adds to give me negative 5 multiplies to give me negative 6 is a negative 6 and a positive 1. So positive 1 and a negative 6. And again, we get the same answer either way. But what's interesting is what happens when you start getting stuff like this. When we've been Munchkin numbering, we haven't been Munchkin numbering really to get fractions inside our brackets here. We've been Munchkin numbering and everything's been whole numbers. But now that we can complete the square and we can see that you can complete the square and still get some crazier numbers, that means technically this was Munchkin numberable. But to Munchkin number this, you notice at the beginning there's nothing in common. So you just have to find what adds to give you negative 9 and multiplies to give you a negative 36. That might be tricky for a lot of people. Or might not. Instead, what you can do is if you look at your final answer, when we Munchkin number, you notice that we typically are supposed to be getting two brackets, and here we're only getting one. It's because this negative 2 can be reincorporated back into one of these two brackets. To figure out which one it should go back into, is just look to see the finish, the, the end part of your binomials. That's currently a whole number already, which means that's fine. So you can reintroduce the negative 2 back into this bracket. If I reintroduce it back into this bracket, this is what it would look like. So I'm basically multiplying the negative 2 back into this bracket. That'll give me a negative 2x, and a negative 2 times negative 3 over 2 is a plus 3, which means if I were to Munchkin number the original question, I actually would have got that as my answer. If you complete the square, you would have got that as your answer. These are identical, and hopefully you can recognize that, which means you can complete the square for ugly, ugly numbers and still be able to get the same answers that you Munchkin numbered it. Let's just do it for this last one, just so you can see. Normally when we Munchkin number, if I were to Munchkin number this, I should only get two brackets here. But now I'm getting two brackets with an extra 8 that's been factored out. So let's reintroduce that 8 into both of these. I say both of them because you notice that they're both fractions. And if you look at the denominators, that'll tell me what I have to multiply by. If I take this 8 and effectively break it up into a 4 times 2, Take the 4, multiply into this bracket. Take the 2, multiply into this bracket. In fact, let me show it to you written this way instead. 8 is really a 4 times 2. 4 times 2 times an x plus 1 half. This is all the stuff that I would do in my head. Well, this 4, I'm going to put it beside this guy instead. So I've got the 2 times the x plus 1 half and the 4 times x minus 3 quarters. Remember, when we factor, we can reverse the order of our factors. So now, I can reintroduce the 2 back into the first bracket. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 half is plus 1. The second bracket, 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times negative 3 quarters is negative 3. And that is your answer that you would have got if you Munchkin numbered the original question instead of completing the square. I'll leave it there.